Eh, we've been, is, oh, go ahead, yeah, I was gonna say we've been playing uh, hokey pokey with the uh, the air conditioning, you know. Yeah, is that fixed yet or no? No, they haven't gotten in touch with me about an estimate for the new one. Uh, not that we're gonna get the new one here anytime soon because the season is practically over. Right. Uh, but would like to have an idea of what it's gonna be. So it's just like it's like four days on and two days off or five days on, whatever. I think we ran it until Saturday morning. And then we had it off Saturday, Sunday, and most of Monday, and then turned it back on Monday night. Right. And it's it's blown cold, and that'll probably give us until, like, Friday, Saturday again. You know, we just got to yeah. keep busy and stay out of mm. trouble on the weekends, you know? Yep, nurse it. Nurse it until the cold yeah. weather comes. Right. And then you won't fix it until it's hot, you know what I right. mean? Because it's like, oh, we're not going to fix it in the winter, because why spend money on what we're not going to use? And it'll be like, like come June, we'll get a, a heat wave. We're like, oh, we wish this we did this a couple months earlier. Well, that's the thing. It'll have been off the entire season. So it'll be a nice recharge there, you know? There you go. So I hope it all works out for you. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Yep. Yep. We had a good run. Who doesn't, you know? Yeah. Uh, so how was your weekend, uh, first uh, football season, games, thing, whatever? Yep. So, okay. So this is what uh, uh, I lost my fantasy football game. Okay. So I was like, oh, okay. I was up against uh, Brett in, in this week, and uh, he was a fiend of Phil. No, wait. That's friends of Phil. So um, he, he – like we went – and basically because he had players – uh, that he picked that would play on maybe Sunday night and Monday, I forget. So I had already lost by like late Sunday afternoon while the games were still going on. And I'm like, oh, I only have a couple of players and he still has players to play and he's ahead of me. So like this is over and there's like literally no more stress. So I'm like, ah, it is what it is. But I will say it's different watching football as a someone playing fantasy than someone who's just rooting for one team and against 31 of their rivals. So is this, is that, so you said different, is it better? Is it worse? Um, it's uh, at first I was way too into it. And then I was like, well, I can't control any of this. So I'm not going to keep checking back to see how my my guys are doing. Mm-hmm. And then the second half of the uh, like of the day when I was neck and neck, uh, the Raiders were playing. So I decided to stop watching the Red Zone, which is great for I don't know. Do you, do you know how the Red Zone works? Like on TV, we talked about it here. I think before okay. when you and Adam did it, um, right? When you guys split the cost last year, I think. But yeah, yeah. just real short version. It's like, oh, it's TV that like they're just going to cut to whatever when somebody's in the red zone, which is the twenty yard line to the end zone. It's like okay, so that means you could see people score and they'll give you stats on fantasy people. So I was watching that. And that's where I was kind of like, oh, well, this person scored. Let, does, does Brett have them? And let me, me let me go look because I can't memorize a whole team. And who do I have? I can't remember. So I was like, that was different. And then the Raiders started playing. I wasn't turning away. And I ended up gotten very invested in the Raiders. And they ended up winning over their hated rivals, the Denver Broncos. Uh, sorry, Dewicki. Um And... The Chargers lost to uh, Josh's Dolphins. So I was like, thank you, Josh, for because, you know, you have control over that. And then um, because the Chiefs lost on Thursday night, that made me number that made me champion in the AFC West. Joe. <laughs> so like why even finish the season? The Raiders won, Joe. So. So, you know, we'll we'll talk about it. We talk about the pigskin pickums, of course, in the main show. Mm-hmm. If if you had a choice, win the fantasy football thing or Raiders make it to the Super Bowl? Raiders make it to the Super Bowl. Okay. Let, so, world peace or Raiders in the, win the Super Bowl? Raiders win the Super Bowl every time. We'll get All around. Right. I didn't even say win. I just said make it, too. Oh, make it? Mm, okay. I thought you said win the Super nope, Bowl. Nope, make it, too. Really, like, 
I still, you know what? Here's here's what I say. If they make it to the Super Bowl, they have a chance of winning the Super Bowl. They have just as good as a chance as the other team. That's right. If not better. <laughs> so that there, there's there's that going on. And then a lot of the teams I disliked lost. So yeah. it was a tasty first week, even though I had lost uh, fantasy football. And in the end, if I lose fantasy football and I don't do well and I win no money, like it only cost me 20 bucks. And that old saying, I've spent more on less. So yeah. we'll see how it pans out. Because we didn't get to go out, me, Josh, and Scott didn't get to go out on Sunday because Scott got sick. Oh. And his he was with his sister who pissed hot for COVID. There you so go. He was worried that he had it. And he was like, Oh, I don't want to come out and you know, blah, blah, blah. And um he he I just talked to him before we recorded about something and he said, no, he never got it. So I was like, okay, you were just sick, whatever. I didn't want that anyway. So I was kind of like, I was tired for uh, the, the whole weekend of doing something. I said, Josh, I'm not going out. I'm going to take the first week weekend and just watch it on the couch, get a pizza and doing it. So I, I think it would have been more fun if I had got out with friends to watch the game too. You know what I mean? So we'll see where that goes in the next couple of weeks. That was going to be my next question. Thank you. Um, yep. If you got a chance to get out with the fellas to watch the game. Just fell apart. That's all. Yeah. So that leads me to, you know, the two things that are going on with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so Sunday, you know, I'll get to the rest of my Sunday later. We, you know, we go at my dad's house and April at work on Sunday and we get up there and it's like quarter after four. And she's like, yeah, I'm not feeling good. She goes, I'm not going to come up. I'm going to go home. I'm going to take something. I'm going to lay down, right? Mm -hmm. So then Monday night, Ace is like, yeah, I'm not feeling good. I don't know what's going on. I got like a little something in my throat. We take his temperature. He's 103. We're like, oh, shit, you know? So April was sick Sunday and Monday. Ace was sick Monday, Tuesday now. Looks like. He should kick it by Wednesday, but we're probably still going to keep him home. And I'm not feeling great myself right now. Right. I don't care if you're sick Thursday, but Friday you have to feel good. Yeah. Well, that's Dog the thing. It was, it, was, it was one of those things where, like, I was feeling fine on Monday. I was feeling fine this morning. And when Asa was still running a fever this morning, I'm like, okay, I'm going to start. Like, I'm going to make sure he's taken care of and fed and Medicaid and everything else like that. Now I'm going to start taking some preemptive stuff for me mm-hmm. to stave it off. Like, I don't feel, like, sick or run down, but, like, I could feel it in the back of my throat. Like, I got, like, the runny nose and stuff coming. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Dayquil, Dayquil, and I got my, I got the Rattler here for tonight when we're done. Aha. With yeah. I understand that. Uh, but uh, it's not, I don't. Again, I'm going to say I don't think it's COVID, you know, like nobody like he went to his doctor today and they tested him for like they swabbed him for everything and it all came back negative. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the big thing that I always say is like, as long as I can taste stuff, I don't have COVID. Right. Right. I took my temperature before we started recording. My temperature's perfect. Um, I don't know. We'll see. You know, I'm I, I got this and I got. At odds, and I got the Patreon show, and then I got wrestling on Saturday, so it's a busy week for me. Uh, luckily, I don't talk during the course of my normal day. Right, that is true. To give everything uh, a rest. Right. No, that's a lie. Anyway. No, uh, you lie. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, just you know, just staving off illness, and I think there's just something going around. You know. Yeah. Um, like Friday, Ace's little buddy that we pick up from school is like, oh, he's staying home because he's sick. Uh, over the weekend, so-and-so was supposed to come out with us and do Pokemon. Oh, she's staying home. She's sick. Oh, okay. Something's yeah. going around, right? Yeah. And I think, you know, obviously because we went through a pandemic and COVID and everything else like that, you want to fear the worst, but you also want to, like, get back into that mindset of, like, nah, it's probably not COVID. Maybe it's right. just, like, the right. cold, right? Everything's not death when you're yeah. sick, you know? Yeah, yeah, but Sunday before we went to my dad's house, um, Ace and I, I'm not going to bore you with how we got there, but Ace and I went to Red Lobster for lunch. Oh, cheesy biscuit time. Yes, okay, so 
Ace had never been. We had mentioned it to him before. April doesn't like seafood. He says, well, me and dad should go when you're gone one day, mom. And I'm like, she's gone to work on Sunday. We, You and I can go for lunch, right? Right. So we go, and it's shrimp feast. I love shrimp feast. But they don't call it shrimp feast anymore. What do they call they, it? They call it the ultimate shrimp festival. Thank you for not saying it the way you could have. I know. Uh, so it's 20 bucks, okay? Right, that's per person, obviously. Dine in only. Sure, what, are you going to take shrimp home in your pocket? Okay. <laughs> okay. You ready for the, uh... Oh, I know the opportunity that you run. You do it with the fries at Red Robin. What do you mean? You, you, listen, Joe, I've known you and your opportunities along the way. You always say, like, if you can get, you know, because I, I used to remember when they did the shrimp fest or the ultimate shrimp thing that they're doing now. It's like when you order your first one, they have four different or five different shrimp things that you can get. And it's like, you could start with two. And then, you know, you can, like, choose two. And then after that, you have to tell us what the one you want is next. And we'll only bring you one at a time. Is that still the way they do it? You start with three, and they oh. bring you two. Oh, my God. Okay. So the opportunity is even stronger. So when you know you're getting full, you order two two more each, and then you have four. And you oh, I can't eat these. Can I get some good to-go to containers? Am I close to your opportunity? Very close. <laughs> See, again, it's dine-in only, right? Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to get it and take it home, you know? Yeah. Well, what are they going to do, throw it away? Well, I got the dine-in only that I can't take stuff home. Mm-hmm. But Asa didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he's looking at the menu. He's in his mind. He's like, it's red lobster. I got to get a lobster. Okay. Has he ever had lobster before? I'm like, you've never had lobster before. You don't know if you're going to like it. Look at the price of the lobster. And he looks at the price of the lobster and his eyes get like as big as sauce saucers. Right. Mm -hmm. So I go, what do you like? I go, I know you like shrimp. Okay. I go, do you want to get the ultimate shrimp, whatever thing like I'm getting? He goes, no, that'll be too much. I go, okay. They have like, uh, so they have a thing where it's like two your way, three your way, or the ultimate, right? Mm -hmm. So like it's $16 for the two, $18 for the three, $20 for the ultimate. So I go, you get the two, I'll get the ultimate. And I'm having him bring, you know, out to me, right? Right. And he eats his meal like a normal person. Now he also eats the biscuits and he loves the biscuits. Never had the biscuits before. We had really hyped those up. He loved them, right? Right. So he's eating. And I'm on my third go around, okay? Right. And I say to Asa, I go, hey. Or they just brought up my third whatever. And I go, hey, bring me two more of whatever. So I take a bunch of the shrimp off my plate and I put them on Asa's plate. Right. So she brings out the fourth one. And I go, oh, you know, I go, his his eyes were bigger than his stomach. You know, he got the two. He should have got the kid's meal. I go, can we get a to-go thing for this? And she winks. And she goes, no problem. I go, and you know what? This is his first time here. He really liked the biscuits. Can we get, like, one more to go home? She don't care. They're not coming out of her pay. Okay. So she brings the to-go thing. Everything that's on his plate, I go, just throw that in the to-go thing. I get another fifth round. Everything's just going home, right? Right. She then brings out not one biscuit, four fresh biscuits in like a special heat, like resealable bag for them. Right. And Ace is like, oh my God, like, I can't believe we did this. And I go, not only can't believe we did this, you know, if mom was here, she wouldn't have let me done any of this. That's right. <laughs> She's an honorable woman. With she a is. dishonorable man. So he so he and I ate two of the fresh like one each of the two fresh biscuits in the car before we left. You got, got Joe's got some walking biscuits. That's right. Walking in the car biscuits, but he was just like, Oh my god. He like he came home and he told mom, he goes, he goes, We must have came home with like thirty extra shrimp that we weren't supposed to come home with. What a little <laughs> stooge. No, I wanted it. I listen, I thought it would listen. Right. It's already done. It's home. There's nothing. It's not like April's being like, well, you have to go take that shrimp back. You know, it's already right. here. No, I know. But it sets a bad precedent. He's like, going to be a little narc when he grows up. Nah, he's up. Listen, he's he's 
He's been someone who can't keep a secret his entire life. I know, I know. And I knew this. Well, I'm like, oh my god, tell your mother what we did today. Yep. But I will say this. Uh, I don't know if it was in conjunction with football season, but 12.30 on a Sunday, Red Lobster is hopping. Sure, it's lunch, everybody. I think it might be the Shrimp Fest, too, or whatever. You know what I yeah. mean? That that packs them in. So. Yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, the only other thing I had, I don't know if you if, if you want to talk about, was I went to see a concert over the weekend. That's right. You went to go see uh, Alice Cooper, who I guess they're re- – oh, and this will be a great thing as a uh, follow-up from last week's show. But uh, Alice Cooper, who apparently is no longer doing the radio show anymore – I don't know. I just heard it the other night. Did he quit already? No, they said that like th- it either like it's ending soon or this is his last year of doing it. Okay. Well, he is like seventy five. He he don't look a day over seventy. No, and I always tell the story because they're like, oh, like we were at the show and there was a couple of us there, jo- Josh and Matt. I'll tell you the story in a minute. And it's like they're like, oh, he still sounds good for how old is he? And I said seventy eight maybe because like he started in sixty eight. It's like he's not going to be a spring chicken. And they're like, oh, like we looked it up and it was seventy five. And they're like, well, how long do you think he can keep going? And I, I anytime anybody says that to me about Alice, I tell the story is that he goes, um. Uh, who's the lead singer of the Rolling Stones? Um, I can't. Uh, I can't think of his name, Joe. You're gonna just leave me hanging, aren't you? Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger says uh, he goes. He goes. Mick Jagger's five years older than me. So when Mick Jagger retires, I have five years before I have to retire. So that's his plan. But uh, we we ended up going up the mountain. It was me and Josh. Scott was supposed to come, but he wasn't feeling good. So it might have been COVID. So he didn't go. So I went and I picked up Josh. We were running late. I had a bunch of stuff to do over the weekend. So I got there at a little after six, and the gates opened at six. And it had two opening bands. And I forget who the, one of them was ministry. I forget who the other one was. Was it and Slayer, like, maybe? No, it wasn't Slayer. But uh, – um, Monday, uh, so like Scott or Matt was there, and he's like, Oh, they went on at like 6 15 because there's two opening bands. I was like, I don't care about the opening band. So we're going up Montage Mountain. I'm driving, I've had a bad day, uh, up to this point, and we're going up the hill, and it turns into two lanes, right? And the signs say, Uh, right lane reserved parking, left lane general admission. So I'm in the right lane, and I'm going up, and I'm like, Oh, I have to get into the left lane. And I go and I see there's a gap, right? So and there's like an expensive Lincoln Town Car behind me. So I'm like, oh, he left me a gap. I have the blinker on and he leaves me the gap. So I start pulling over and he hits the gas. And Josh is like, oh, boy. And I said, I said, fuck it. And jo- and I came out into the lane going, my truck is 10 years old and has dings on it. I said, I will put that Lincoln into the rail. And I like he went off into the other lane and like swerved and he's like laying on the horn, but he comes around me and he's like giving me the look, but I'm in the left lane. I'm like, buddy, I'll let you in. I do not care. Right. Because I'm where I want to be. We get up the top. And at this point, the signs were a complete lie. Any lane leads you to general admission. So I was like, okay. So we go into general admission and the guy keeps in front of me, the, the, the limousine and it says limousine right on the, License plate has a limousine license plate, Um, but it wasn't the stretch. It was just like a Lincoln town car. And he had two people in the back and he's like talking to each person that he sees where he's going to, you know, like they're directing traffic to the parking lot. So I'm like, oh, he's probably going to drop them off right at the door. We pull into the lot and we have to park next to each other. All right. (laughs) Because he never got, he's like, you just have to park. He sits down, we get out. He lets the two and they had to be teenagers to their 20s somewhere in there i'm like i got no beef with them nothing happened but we end up leaving he kind of gives me the 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 evil eye as i'm getting out of the truck i lock my truck i'm like i don't care i go long story short we're coming back from the concert and i'll explain that we left like a few songs early so we could listen to him walking up okay and we get to the cars and he's sitting on the hood because he's a limo he's not gonna leave it you know what i mean and I walk up and I just give him the salute and the nod. And he was so fucking pissed. And I'm like, I don't, I don't care. What are you going to do? Like, 
anything happens to your car, you lose your job. Anything happens to my truck, I get it fixed. So uh -huh. in my mind, I'm like, you want to go? We'll go. Josh is like, you're out of control today, Tom. <laughs> he said, I'm hot and I'm tired. And I'm not dealing with this fuck. I... I'm with you. I absolutely would have said something or did something, but I do much. I I much more like your passive aggressive salute to the guy. Yeah, yeah. So we get to the concert. We're running late. Um, uh, and I hope Josh is listening. Is Josh needed to do his paper ticket thing? Yeah. So we could either walk in right here or go all the way around the ski slope and get the paper ticket. So Josh opted for that. So I followed him and I didn't realize how far we were going to have to go. <laughs> and we went, my legs were just dying. It was hot and I was cramping up and we got there. So if we had went in the other way, Matt was right on that side. So we went all the way around. So we were on the complete other side of the concert, got our tickets. I got a paper ticket too while I was there. I was like, what the hell? I'm here. Um, right. But as soon as we walked in, Josh was like, maybe I'll have a slice of pizza. And Alice hit the stage. And I was like, well, you go have a slice of pizza. I'm going to watch Alice. He's like, nah, I'll go. So we went. And I, st I was trying to walk to where Matt was. And, he and Josh is like, we're never going to find him in the dark. I want to watch the concert. So I said, okay, I, I don't care as long as I can watch him here. So we watched him from there. He put on heck of a show. It was short. I was surprised he didn't play anything off the new album at all. Really? Not yeah, And the new album's out a week and a half. Nothing. He didn't even really do, like, a lot of the, like, stage stuff because he had a short set for a legend. Um, and he did some, like, weird, like, like deep cut stuff, which I'm, I'm always happy about. Um, and then halftime had comes, he, he gets off the stage, uh, so we walk and find Matt. And then I watched Rob Zombie, who I had never seen. And he sounds amazing. Uh -huh. And his show was awesome. And to tell you the truth, I, well, I've seen Alice. I have to have seen Alice a dozen times. I loved Rob way better. It was my first time. And I was like, this just crushes it. And uh, had a great time. Um, and in between, uh, the guy in the Nazi tank top walked by. Oh, boy. And I just want to say that, and I don't mean in a good way, I was fascinated by that during between the two shows because I was talking to Matt and, my, and, and but there was a guy there we know named Bob. And I'm like, that guy has like a literal red sh shirt on with the, not the color of the Nazi flag. And he has the big swastika on the chest. And later on, because I was focused, we were arguing whether it was a tank top or it was a sleeveless. And I was like, tank top's better for my story. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm looking at him and he walks by and they're like, yeah, he's been here a couple of times. He walked by a, a couple of times and I couldn't let it drop as we were talking because I have never seen that I know of a Nazi in the wild. <laughs> like, I, I've never, I've never seen somebody sporting a swastika. Maybe I've seen somebody with an SS tattoo and I've never, like, thought about it. Okay. I've seen at least two guys. Right. What? I've seen at least two guys with SS tattoos. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, and I was like, okay, maybe I've seen that, but I, I don't really equate it to swastika in my head. Like, that's, sure. that's like, you can kind of, like, hide tattoos and stuff. And he's walking by and I'm like, I've never seen one. I've never seen someone proudly in my life. I'm 50 years old. I've never seen this. And they're like, yeah, you just walk. And they, we would talk about concerts or whatever. And I'd be like, no, really? How do you go out in public like that? And, and I was like, how, like, and it's 2023. Like, like, have, have you never read a newspaper or a history book? And the one guy was with us. He's like, well, you know, his life's probably terrible and he has to blame somebody and it can't be himself. And I was just laughing. And I was like, I, I just actually wanted to stop and ask him a question. You know, okay. probably wouldn't have went well. So this is where we run into it, I guess. Was he alone by himself walking around the crowd? He was walking, and there might have been someone with him, because when he walked by me, I only saw him once. Yeah. And there was somebody walking, like, like off their shoulder, but, like, a step behind. But because, like, people are standing on a field in rows, 
Yeah. If that person is walking and not walking with him, he doesn't have a choice to get away from him. So I'm like, that person might be with him. And I never asked if he had a gaggle of Nazis with him. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, right. Like, obviously, like, you and Josh were at the concert together. Mm-hmm. And you ran, we went to Matt and his friend Bob. So now, like, there's four of you, I guess, right. congregating. Yes. So, like, when you see this guy walk by, did he, like, go over to the concession stand? Did he's like, oh, I'm going to go walk over here to hang out with my other friend? Like, because, again, it's one. Okay, so what's what? I don't know what's worse. Like, if you're a guy at a concert like this and uh-huh. you're wearing a Nazi swastika shirt, you, I, I would hope that you might have some backup. But then I again, would hope that you didn't. But anyway. Well, okay, okay. So I would hope that you didn't, but obviously if you're there alone, you're you're asking for trouble, I guess. But then I then on the flip side, it is our area, Todd. And um, it was within the last five years that they finally cracked on cracked down on selling Nazi flags and things with swastikas on them at the Bloomsburg Fair. Right. Makes sense. Did a deep oh, fried Nazi flag. <laughs> right. Um so, um, let me just say this. He walked out of the crowd. Yeah. And then back into the crowd the other way. So I have no idea where he went. And then that was the last I saw. Him. Did he lose a bet? Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe he's just making a point, you know? Maybe he's just asking questions, John. Oh, well. I feel I as though that's his a... name was Schlaz. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it was he rejecting supremacies left and right. Right. But I was standing there. I was like, I was talking to Bob and I was making Bob laugh. I'm like, well, at least we found the one Nazi in this area. <laughs> right? And he's laughing. I'm like, because there's no white hoods in any attics around here. You know what I mean? Like, and he's like, oh my God, he goes, you're, you're, you're delusional. I said, I know I'm, I'm kidding. But, uh, like I said, I just had to get it out because I'd never seen it. And like I said, I was at a concert. I'm like, I, you go, you're, you you look like you're heading towards the exit. I'm just going to let you go. You know, the, the closest I came was many, many years ago. It was when I was, um, first going to ECW shows. Oh, shocking. Well, okay. And I went to a show in Jim Thorpe. And there was a gentleman who was wearing a shirt that said, this would have been like 1995, 1996. Mm-hmm. Gentleman wearing a shirt that said, the real boys in the hood. And it was in the font of the popular movie of the time. Mm-hmm. And it was a bunch of clan members on, on the shirt with like torches and rope and stuff like that. Humor was different back then, Joe. I, well, again, it, it was a different time, right? And you can't judge. Question marks on the end of both of those. Yeah. But uh, and, and just like I said, when when I and I when Bob told me, uh, he's like, "Yeah, his life's a mess, and he and he can't blame himself." Well, I was like, "Well, I guess I know who he does blame." Yeah. You know, like wow, just shocking. Anyway. That's a bold statement to wear to do in public, right? Yeah. I'm like, not even like something that could be taken like, oh, like, what is that? Like, there's no mistaking a swastika in this day and age. And I mean, not like, like, you know, like the R on Robin's costume, not like that. We're talking bigger than the Superman ass, you know? And and then you said it was a red shirt? Whatever color, like it, the, that color of the Nazi flag. But what I'm saying is like, I... If he was wearing like a black T-shirt with that on there, right? Maybe it could like it blend like, in a little bit. Yeah, maybe you blend in a little bit. But if you're wearing like a red or a dark red looking shirt with that on it, you're just like, I want people to see me. Oh yeah, there's no like I'm trying to blend, you yeah. know. And let's just say, Joe, if he's representing the master race. Yes. The master race is in trouble, by the way. So, you know what I mean? Like he he kind of looked like a like a slightly thinner, older version of me. So, oh. I say slightly, slightly, not you know, not much. So I was like, you it's, go run that uh, triathlon. You know what I mean? 
It's like that scene from Preacher uh, where he confronts the cl- oh, Jesse confronts all the clan members. And he's like, what the hell is wrong with you? Where's your chin? Why yeah. is it the people who are like supposed to be representing the, the, the white race all look like this? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to remember who the comedian was, uh, who he had a, a Titus, Christopher Titus. He goes, he goes, why is it like uh, the people who are all about uh, white power are the whitest people? Like can't even handle a sunny day. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're the, you're the people who should be, you know, in charge of everything. But anyway, I think we've talked enough about Nazis on this show. Uh, I'd say we talked too much about them. But again, uh, luckily this is not on YouTube. And luckily we're not getting super chats. So we'll be okay. Um, is that like super cuts? Or? No. Okay. Uh, and last but not least, just before just before we wrap up, you know, I mentioned Alice Cooper with the radio. We were talking about the college radio stations around here. Oh, yeah, that's right. You, were you doing testing to see what you could pick up? <laughs> I did. So, uh, 88.5 and, uh, 90.7. Okay. Uh, 90.7. Yeah. 90.7. Uh, those are the two that are down here. Wilkes and Kings. Mm -hmm. I could barely pick them up in my car. Now everything is online through the, their websites or whatever it is. Right. Right. 91.7, which is Marywood. You could pick up anywhere. Cool. Yeah. And I'll plug them. It's uh, ZMFM 917 Marywood uh, uh, Radio. And it was like, I was coming up on Sunday, and it was like, they were playing like old stuff, and they were playing like new stuff that like kind of sounds like the old stuff that I like, you know? That's, I'm telling you, man, leave yeah. that station on when you're driving around. You will find, a, I found a lot of recent cool stuff. Yeah. And Joe, it might make you somewhat relevant again. Yeah. I don't know. Let's, let's, let's not go crazy. Mm hmm. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to follow up with those, um, you know. If you have a good college station uh, in your area and it's online, it probably is. I don't know. Leave it in the comments or something or the yes. or the discord. Right. Yeah, there you go. Um, you know, we have the discord that's conjunctioned with the Patreon, Patreon dot com slash long bucks heroes. Uh, we got Captain America 1990 coming this weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, got the main show, got T public sale going on this weekend. Thirty five percent off everything there got the ebay affiliate link those are all the ways you can support us yes yeah and uh that's all the time we have for this show this week so hopefully you enjoyed this uh what episode number was this i wasn't even looking the way that these things work this was 461 of long box heroes after dark wow and uh yeah so uh thanks for listening everybody and we'll see you next week you're listening to the soon to be named network the lamborghini of Podcast Networks.